time for another Mark's Comic Hall, y'all. Hey, everybody. Mark here. Am I coming through okay? It's really weird lighting. Sorry about that. I'm in a new, semi-new apartment. Wow, I'm getting a weird glare. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can adjust that. That is such a weird glare. There we go. Okay, well, now it's dark, but oh well. Um, hey, uh, I'm back. Uh, I've been gone for a long time, and I'm sorry. Uh, I actually, I think my last video, if I'm not mistaken, was actually posted, my God, was it something like April of last year? And even then, I was like, hey, I'm back, everybody. I've been gone for a long time. Now I've been gone even longer. I've been gone for almost a year, and so... First and foremost, for those of you that are seeing this uh, and uh, that have been wondering where I've been, uh, I apologize. You know, I, I had a lot of things happening. As you can see behind me, all these boxes, uh, I moved. I still have not unpacked a lot of my boxes. Um, I'm actually recording this at 5.30 in the morning. And I'm not recording it because I'm up that early. I'm recording it at 5.30 in the morning because I am an insomniac and I cannot sleep. And I, uh, anyway, um, I saw that Tito posted a video just recently uh, after he had been gone for a long time. And I kind of used that as an opportunity to, to light a fire under my own butt and, uh, and basically come back to doing some videos. So hopefully this is the beginning of a return to form. Um, and, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you are probably feeling the same way, uh, this is a weird time right now with everything going on with coronavirus and COVID-19 and, um, everybody being scared and confined in their homes. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of catch up haul videos because I have a lot of books that I haven't done videos for that I haven't shown. So this will be an opportunity for me to kind of catch up a bit. So you may be seeing a lot of me. Um, but uh, anyway, on today's Mark's Comic Call, y'all, my big return video, uh, it's going to be a, a good one because I've got three different things to show. Uh, I'm going to start off with New This Week books, uh, all the books that came out on March 18th, 2020. Um, so I'll go through those real quick. And then I'm going to show um, a 50 cent haul that I picked up from a local comic shop and then I'll show, I'll kind of wrap it up with an eBay purchase that I have. And um, if by some strange chance anyone wants to jump in the chat and talk, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll talk. So I hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, and I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy and uh, taking your vitamin C and trying your best to avoid getting whatever this crazy virus is. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Okay, so new this week books. We'll start with those. I got a big stack. I guess the best way to do this is, uh, well, here we go. All right, so uh, Fantastic Four, True Believers, just a reprint of, uh, what is this, a reprint of, I can't remember the issue number. They're doing all these uh, tying into Empire, spelled with a Y. Uh, Marvel's reprinting all these issues. It's just a great John Byrne issue. So I've been picking up a lot of these uh, reprints lately. Already. Sorry about that. Okay. So that one. Uh, this is Avengers, True Believers, uh, First Appearance of Swordsman reprint. Sorry about the glare, guys. And again, my apologies about all this crap. I'm, I've got to go through those boxes and unpack them. Um, way behind on that. Some of that's comics. Some of that's toys. Uh, some of it is books for that bookshelf right there. Um, and uh, yeah, and then there's even more boxes right there. Right there. I've got a lot of boxes. Uh, JLA number one, dollar reprint. It's kind of cool that DC is doing these dollar reprints and um, arguably better quality paper than the Marvel dollar reprints. Uh, man, I love this book. Justice League number one, uh, Kevin McGuire, and is that J.M. DeMatteis? Yep, J.M. DeMatteis. 
Kevin McGuire and uh, Keith Given, and a uh, really great sort of relaunching, reimagining for the Justice League. I know dollar reprints are boring. Sorry, I'm trying to get through them as quickly as I can. Uh, Brave and the Bold presents number twenty-eight. This is the first appearance of the Justice League of America, I believe, and uh, it's a this is a facsimile edition. Uh, DC's doing a really good job on these, so pretty happy about that. That's a book I always wished I could have owned and never could afford it. So very happy to now have a perfect replica in my collection. Uh, Batman ninety one. Uh, this is just kind of continuing the whole current Tinian uh, Batman story. Uh, by the way, this guy, Jorge Jimenez, uh, that's drawing Batman currently, this guy is awesome. I don't know if you guys have been checking out his work. I know these Batman issues have been kind of hard to come by because of the whole punchline designer storyline. Uh, and, and the designer actually continues the story in that book. So if you if you like that character, you're going to want to pick up that issue. But I know stores have been really limiting those and making them hard to come by. And this is the variant cover of Batman 91. Uh, just a really uh, awesome Penguin uh, cover. Is that coming through okay? It's, uh, it's a great cover. Was that Matina? I think, I think it's Matina. Uh, I did not get Nightwing cover A, which is the beginning of the Joker War storyline, but this is Nightwing cover B, uh, which is also pretty low ordered. So actually, this is probably the rarer, um, or will be the rarer of that issue. Uh, I'm hoping I can pick up a cover A sometime tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to do a little running around. I just picked up an extra issue of Valkyrie number eight. This is where Thor turns nasty at the end. Um that came out like a couple of weeks ago, I think. Uh, Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen, number four. Uh, this last issue, number three, was the one that had the first full appearance of Punchline. Uh, she's nowhere to be seen in this. Uh, in fact, uh, this is really all about Lex Luthor. So if you were going to go pick that up because you thought it somehow continued the Punchline thing, it does not. Um, Punchline's next... Appearance, I believe, is Batman 92. This is a, an awesome cover. Uh, Deceased's Unkillables, uh, number two. This is cover... Uh, I think this is called cover D or cover C. But it's supposed to look like the Full Metal Jacket movie poster. And just really, really cool. So, I don't think many people ordered these or ordered the... Uh, the variants on them. Spider Woman number one came out this week and has a ton of covers. This is uh, the Todd Knock Todd Knock cover, um, and uh, it's one of many. Uh, but I like Todd. I'm, I'm friends with Todd. I know Todd, so I'm always going to pick up whatever he does, pretty much. And I did like that cover. Uh, I think I'm supposed to go to a different shop tomorrow to pick up the Campbell cover. I don't have that yet. Um, this is Captain Marvel number 16, a.k.a. number 150, Mark Brooks cover, uh, part of that whole Dark Avenger storyline. Um, I'm guessing that brings that storyline to a close. I, I, I don't know. Hopefully, maybe. Um, okay. Almost done with the new this week. Bang! Number two. Uh, this is awesome. If you guys have not been picking this up. Uh, the first issue sold out um, and is, like, from what I can see, impossible to find. The second printing of the first issue sold out. It's going to go into third printing or maybe already has. And this is number two. Um, and, uh, yeah, cool book. I always dig some Matt Kent artwork, and uh, he's, he's killing it on that. Or not artwork, story. Well, story and artwork. He's great at both. Uh, this is a new book from a new company, Upshot. Uh, this is The Resistance by J. Michael Straczynski and Mike Diodato Jr. Um, maybe a book that gets overlooked. Uh, Upshot put out, I think it was like three different books this week, if I remember correctly. So that was the one that seemed to be the juiciest of the bunch. 
Uh, and then this is X-Ray Robot number one by Mike and Laura Allred. Uh, I pick up almost anything Mike Allred does, and this just looked really, really cool. That's cover A. Uh, this is cover B, which is uh, meant to look like... Uh, uh, oh, God, what's the name of the group? The 1980s record, uh, One Step Beyond. I can't remember the name of the group. I cannot believe I'm blanking on that. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sure one of you guys will will see that and immediately know. Uh, okay, so um, that was the New This Week books. And now I have, uh, there's a shop in Dallas called Comic Asylum. By the way, if you guys... Uh, are worried about COVID-19 and you're, you're kind of staying close to home, uh, please continue to shop at your local comic book stores. These guys need your business. Um, and uh, they, uh, almost every comic shop is offering curbside service. So if you don't want to go in, you don't want to risk it in terms, they can deliver their comic, they can deliver the comic books to you. So you can still pick up your books. And, um, but uh, we've got a lot of great shops in Dallas. And uh, these guys are all working really, really hard to try to keep up with what's going on right now. So please uh, don't let this scare you away from shopping at your local comic book store. Um, okay, so this is from a, a store called Comic Asylum. Uh, last November at Dallas Comic Show, um, Comic Asylum brought in um, a couple of really, really cool guests. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the DC comic book, Deceased, um, we had the artist and the inker of that book. At the show, Trevor Hairsign and Stefano uh, Stefano Guadino Guadi Guadia. I, I always screw this up. Stefano Gaudiano. That's how you say it. Um, we had both those guys at Dallas Comic Show, and uh, Trevor. It was his very first U.S. show, and Stefano it was his very first Texas show. Uh, and of course, Stefano, outside of DC, is also known for The Walking Dead. Really, really cool to have those guys at Dallas Comic Show. Anyway, uh, Comic Asylum, which is run by Mark Hay, who all store, called Comic Asylum. And uh, it's in Richardson, Texas. And I uh, stopped by because he has he has a whole section of dollar books. And there's always really good stuff in there. And they were doing a sale. And it just so happened I was there on, I think it was like the last day of the sale. And if you bought $10 comics you got $10 comics for free. So essentially it was 50 cents a book. Uh, that's kind of how I looked at it was. It was a 50 cent book sale, even though technically they were a dollar a piece. It was a buy 10, get 10 free deal. Uh, okay, so there's quite a few of these. I'll try to go through these as quickly as possible. Uh, okay, so this is Atari 2600 uh, Sword Quest number one. Uh, made to look like an Atari 2600 cartridge package. How many of you guys are as old as me and had an Atari 2600? Don't be ashamed. I was very happy with my Atari 2600. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, Web Spider-Man number 86. Can I hold it on this side? I guess I can. I need to uh, bag and board some of these. They're, some of these are just in bags. But a great Hobgoblin cover there, uh, and Demigoblin, uh, Alex Saviak artwork. Um, Web of Spider-Man. Okay, I'm going to try to shift here so I can do it this way. Web of Spider-Man number 67. Uh, just another really cool Alex Saviak uh, Spider-Man and Green Goblin. Great cover. Um, I love... I'm a big Alex Saviak fan. I think he's extremely underrated. He's also a good friend of mine. And so I always try to pick up extras of his books whenever I can. Um, this is not Alex Saviak. It's just a classic issue of Spider-Man. We have Spider-Man number 29 featuring Wolverine. I need to get this in a bag and board. There's Wolverine. Just a nice book. That's a book that over time I think is going to gain some more value because it's an early issue from the run. We have Spider-Man number 96. Uh, this is part of the Spirits of Venom storyline. A really nice Mark Tixera painted cover. Like I said, I need to bag and board some of these. They, uh, some of them were not bagged and boarded and some of them were bagged in old bags. So I just took them out. We have Spider-Man number 95, another part of the Spirits of Venom storyline. Venom cover, Alex Savio. Ghost Rider. 
that's part one of the Spirits of Venom storyline. I always love this cover. This is uh, what is Spider-Man number 94. Just a great Alex Saviot cover, Hobgoblin uh, in the clutches of, or Spider-Man in the clutches of Hobgoblin. Uh, Web of Spider-Man number 93. I'm going backwards here. I don't know how this happened. Uh, Web of Spider-Man number 93, because this is the first part of that Hobgoblin storyline. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys either have this book or have seen this book, but this is Web of Spider-Man number 90. Uh, this was a hologram. Can you make out the hologram? Yeah, there it is. Sort of. Eh, kinda. He's there. Anyway, uh, hologram cover, Kane Polly bag. Uh, first appearance of Venom Galactus, Galactus Venom, Galacta Venom. Uh, it's actually like an illusion. It's not real, but I guess it's the first time you'd see Galactus covered in the symbiote, technically. Anyway, it's a cool book. Uh, Web of Spider-Man number 119. I picked this up because it's uh, Stephen Butler artwork. Stephen was at my last show. Dallas Comic Show in November, um, and he did some great work on uh, Web of Spider-Man right before they wrapped up that, that series. Web of Spider-Man number 125. This is, uh, it's got another hologram on the cover. Can you see that? Ooh, that bag is uh, rough. I need to get that bag changed out. Anyway, cool book. And, and this is a flip book. It's actually got like another cover on the other side. Web of Spider-Man number 113 featuring Gambit and uh, Black Cat. Yeah. I think this is an early Gambit appearance, but I can't remember. Um, it's, it's hard to keep track of all those Gambit things. By the way, uh, Tito just showed off uh, Uncanny X-Men uh, annual number 14, I believe it is. Uh, which I have long stated, I think it's number 14, I have long stated that is the first true appearance of Gambit. I cannot stand the fact that people discount that and call it a cameo because he is all over that book. He is in like something like eight or nine panels. He's referred to as Gambit. It is several pages. It's much more than a cameo. So that book is the first true appearance of Gambit. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, Adventures to Superman 497. This is just an early Doomsday appearance, first printing. Action Comics Annual number 13. Uh, I just picked this up because it's got this really cool dark side cover. And I didn't have it. And I have like everything Superman, and I'm shocked I did not have that. Uh, this is great Superman cover, uh, Superman in Action Comics number 720, kind of this white cover with just the ring. This thing's begging to be drawn on at some point. I've had this before, but I, I wanted an extra copy of it. I don't, I don't think I have it currently. Uh, this is Avengers number 18, the Alex Ross, uh, Marvel's 25th anniversary, Marvel's, the series, 25th anniversary cover. Just a really beautiful Alex Ross cover. Okay, I found this on the web for the series 25th anniversary. What cover. is Check going on there? Sorry, folks. That's my my phone must have thought I was addressing it. That's weird. Anyway, I got two of those. God, that is so weird. What what did I say that set it off? Uh, <laughs> Joe the Barbarian. Um, this is a Vertigo dollar book by Grant Morrison and Sean Murphy, and it's signed by Sean Murphy. And I figure for a buck, hard to go wrong. For 50 cents, even harder to go wrong. Uh, Superman in Action Comics number 775. Uh, this is a Tim Bradstreet cover. First appearance of the Elite, and I believe this is a first printing. There is actually a second printing of this book, which is really hard to tell the difference on, but this is a first printing. It has something to do with right up here, the uh, 775 I think is either a different color or there's something, but it doesn't actually say like second printing on it. So this is a first printing. Anyway, it's a cool book. Tim Bradstreet, Superman cover. I think the only Superman cover that Tim Bradstreet ever did. 
This is uh, Agents of Shield. I'm sorry, Avengers number 34, the Agents of Shield variant by uh, Paulo Rivera. And as you can see, this was at one point in time an eight dollar or marked up book, but he had it in the uh, dollar boxes, so I wasn't going to say no. I actually have that cover, but I figured it couldn't hurt to have an extra copy. Uh, Web of Spider Man number 126. The Trial of Peter Parker, Part 1, John Romita Jr. cover. I think it's Stephen Butler interior, but I haven't double-checked. Cool cover, though. Um, with the Robin Anniversary book coming out this week, this is kind of a cool one to have. This is Robin number 127 featuring the female Robin. I cannot remember her name off the top of my head, but I believe this is her first full appearance or maybe the first appearance in costume. Secret Avengers number 20. This is a John Cassidy cover. I had never seen this before. Somehow this had slipped by me. So when I saw it, I was like, that is a smoking hot cover. So I had to have it. Nice Black Widow cover there. It's my boy, John Cassidy. It's my boy. Um, okay. Still going. Um, Superman number 675. Alex Ross cover. Uh, Superman Batman number 50. Arrow number one. This is the Art Germ variant. I already had one, but I figured it couldn't hurt to get another one. And you can see all these books were like $4.50, $5 or more, and they put them in the dollar box. Uh, America number one. See, that was a $4.50 book. Uh, American number one. I guess at some point they're going to put out a movie for this. Uh, Joe Quinones was at my April show last year. The artist of the book. Great guy. Uh, this is X-Men Annual number one from the 1990s series. Jim Lee artwork. Nice thick annual. Uh, not easy to find that in good shape. Like a lot of those got messed up because it's a thick spine. Uh, this is I Am Groot number five, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the first full appearance of Baby Groot in comics, I think. Yeah, because I think in the previous issue, he appears on the last page, and then he's all through this book as Baby Groot. So I'm pretty sure that is the first full appearance of Baby Groot. I got two of those. I have that book, but I just, you know, I pick it up whenever I see it. Um, this is one of those awesome movie poster covers uh, that they were doing for several of the DC books. This is Justice League United, the Mars Attacks movie poster variant. Just a fun variant cover. Um, by, is it, oh, Marco, Marco de Alfonso. Sounds like a, you're ordering an Italian dish. Yeah, I'd like to order the Marco de Alfonso. Uh, this is uh, Green Lantern Corps uh, number 40. And this is the Tony Harris uh, variant, which is made to look like Forbidden Planet. Very, very cool. Uh, don't ever mind having an extra copy of this one. Harley's Little Black Book number five featuring Superman, Neil Adams cover and art. Very cool book. Made to look like his Muhammad Ali versus Superman. Electra number one. Uh, this is the variant cover. Um, I know they've done several of these Electra series. I can't remember which one this is from, but it's a recent one. Uh, Dark Wolverine number 75. This is the uh, variant cover featuring uh, Dokken. Or, you know, it's from Dark Wolverine, but that's Dokken on the cover. Wolverine's son. Always happy to get these for cheap. Fairest, number seven. Really beautiful uh, Adam Hughes cover. Kind of disturbing, but still beautiful. Hauntingly beautiful. Oh my God, did I buy a lot of stuff. What did? I, how much did I spend? I think it was like 30 bucks or I don't know, maybe like 25. I can't even remember. I should be counting these. 
Ferris number 19, or I'm sorry, yeah, Ferris number 19. Another beautiful Adam Hughes cover. You know, Tito was pointing out something that I've noticed too, and that is um, not a lot of people are doing haul videos. People are just doing auctions and like other weird stuff. Uh, so I'm, uh, I got a lot of hauls to show. So this is like going to be the first of many of these types of videos. Okay, this is Red Sonia number nine, the Jenny Frizen cover variant. Interesting. I didn't have it, so I figured why not. Sacred Creatures number one. Uh, Reaver number one. This is the uh, first printing. Um, Becky Cloonan cover. Uh, this book sold out super fast when it came out, and um, I'm kind of shocked it's not worth more, but uh, it looks like it's kind of, I mean, it's marked uh, $10, if you can see that. But uh, And I actually managed to pick up a couple of these in another haul video, which are, or another haul, not haul video, I haven't done that one yet, but I'm going to do another haul video about some, some books I picked up real cheap. Uh, okay, so this is uh, Superman number 51. Uh, I know a lot of people go after 52 because it's the first appearance of, uh, what is it, the new um, the new Superman, or what is, the, what is the reason they go after that? First Keenan Kong? I don't remember. Anyway, this is 51. I didn't have it, so I figured I'd pick it up. Um, or maybe I do have it, and I just, maybe it's a different cover. I can't remember. Uh, Lois and Clark, number one. This is, what, first appearance of uh, New Superman in costume? I can't keep this stuff straight. All, all the Rebirth and New 52 stuff, I can't remember what is what anymore. <sighs> Crazy. Anyway, it's a cool book. Superman Batman Annual, number three, featuring a Bernie Wrightson cover. And it's ever so appropriate that I show this one off because... Uh, we lost Bernie Wrightson three years ago uh, as I record this. Um, and Bernie was a really good friend of mine. And uh, I still miss him every single day. Um, he was like a father figure to me. Uh, he was a hero. He was a mentor. He was a lot of different things. And he was a hell of an artist. Um, so uh, I was very happy to get that. Uh, Action Comics number 844. Uh, this is the... Uh, Jeff Don's Richard Donner co-written co book with Adam Kubert art. Beautiful book. I, oddly enough, never had this, and I'm surprised I didn't, but this is Convergence Superman number two, first appearance of Jonathan Kent as a baby, I suppose. I think that's what it is, and I never had this book. Somehow never got it when it came out. So I was happy to get that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So <laughs> getting close to the end here. Okay. So I mainly pick these up because they're all part of uh, the Gary Frank, Jeff Johns run. So this is Action Comics 858, Action Comics 859. I really need to get these bags and boards. Action Comics 860. Action Comics 861. I love how Gary Frank illustrates Superman. I thought it was great. Action Comics 862. And, of course, Action Comics 863. Kind of cool to find all those together. And then let's see, here we go. This is uh, Birds of Prey, number 10. Just a really cool uh, art germ cover. Oracle mask there on the front. It's a book I didn't have. Uh, this is something, right? Dark Rain Avengers, number one, the list. Isn't that like uh, first Ronin or first Hawkeye as Ronin or something? I can't remember. This cover looks really familiar, though. Like, I've seen people show this off in haul videos. It, it may be nothing. I don't, I don't know. I just saw the cover. It looked familiar, so I thought I'd pick it up. 
Uh, I got two of those, actually. Picked this up because my buddy Kerry Gamble did it. Uh, this is Superman number 31. Just a nice classic Superman book. Beautiful shape. Uh, Superman number 35. Another Kerry Gamble. Ghost number one. Uh, this is when they relaunched Ghost, and this is an Alex Ross cover with uh, Phil Noto interior art from Dark Horse, written by Kelly Sue DeConnick. Uh, this is the Dark Side War Justice League special number one. Just a really cool looking book. Jason Fabok cover. I didn't have it. And then this is kind of cool. This is uh, Dark Side War 100 page Super Spectacular. Um, these are so hard to come by. When DC made these really thick 100 page Super Spectaculars, the condition, it's so hard to find these in good condition on any of them that they did. And this is one I had never seen. And he had two of them, so I grabbed both of them. Okay, so that is from the 50 Cent Hall. So very happy about those. Uh, give me just a second to put those away. Oh, my God. Anyway, all of that together, I think, was like 30 bucks or just under 30 bucks. I can't remember exactly. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, it was, I was very happy with the deal I got on those. And especially considering that that was the last day of their sale. So, um, okay. Still with me? Okay, so my final uh, sh thing that I'm going to show off here. Uh, this is an eBay purchase. Um, so this guy had some books on eBay and, um, I saw a couple things I really wanted and I, uh, decided to, uh, I don't ever want to buy just one book if I'm buying from an eBay seller. So I tried to find as many copies of books that I thought I would like. And so this is what I picked up off of eBay. And I, I, I wish I could remember the seller's name. I, I'll probably, I'll look it up at some point. Um, Spawn 11, this is the newsstand edition. I think they said, is it like one in 100 or something? Like if, if it's newsstand, there's like one copy of the newsstand for every hundred copies of the, you know, regular or something like that. I think that's the stats. Uh, 52, number 48. This is, uh, what is it? First Renee Montoya, uh, which I surprisingly did not have. Or no, I'm sorry. What did I just say? First Renee Montoya as the question, right? Isn't that what I'm thinking of? Yeah, I think that's it. 52 number 48. 52 number 48. Try, try keeping that straight in your head. Uh, 52 number 11, first full appearance of Batwoman. I've got a few of these. Uh, I keep picking them up because, you know, with the series on, uh, doing fairly well, uh, I figure it's not a bad idea to have them. This is G.I. Joe number 21. This is the Silent Snake Eyes issue. This is actually a, um, I think this came with a toy. It's not, it's a reprint, but I think it came with a toy. As you see, it says not for resale. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of cool. I always like that issue and it's nice to have a reader copy, although there's not much to read. Uh, Trees number one by Warren Ellis and uh, Jason Howard. I didn't have it, so I just figured I'd pick it up. Almost done, folks. Ghost Rider number 28 from the Midnight Suns run. This is something. What is this? Is it the first Spirits of Vengeance? I can't remember. It's, it's There's something in this book that's worth getting, especially now. I just can't remember what. Uh, Amazing Heroes, number five. This is the summer uh, swimsuit issue, and it features a cover by uh, Joseph Michael Lindsner, and it's signed by Joseph Michael Lindsner. My buddy. 
And uh, I didn't have this. I've never seen this. I didn't even know it existed. So grab that. Uh, Fantastic Four number 61. This is uh, early Silver Surfer appearance. Uh, Sandman in his new costume, Sandman appearance. Just a really nice early FF issue. Uh, it's got a little bit of, uh, if you can see the chipping out of the cover there. But man, other than that, it's a really pretty copy. I mean, like, I would almost go so far as to call this, like, there's some tiny chipping on the top right there. You can see it. And then that little, little bit over there. But other than that, I mean, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous copy of the Silver Age Marvel book. So, 10 bucks. 10 bucks. And then this, I was really happy about because I've never had any of these. And uh, recently, uh, he's kind of become a bit of a popular character, and that is Captain Britain. This is issue number 11. This is a British Marvel comic book. And uh, so there's Captain Britain. That's a Betsy Braddock uh, bondage cover, you know, right there. And uh, just a really cool looking book, you know. A British comic, as you can see, it says 10 pence right there. Um, anyway, uh, Dr. Sin, spelled with a Y, S-Y-N-N-E, -N -E, was the villain. And, um, yeah, I just mm -hmm. <laughs> I was super stoked to get this because, I mean, and this came out, and just so to give you a little perspective, this came out in 1976. So I'll give you a nice real cool close-up look for that. Oversized, bigger than a normal comic. Um, beautiful, beautiful looking book. Uh, I need to get a better bag and board. This one's not a very pretty one, but, but yeah, super happy to get that. Very, very cool. All right, folks, that's it. Uh, for this episode of Mark's Comic Call, y'all, uh, I will, I will be back. I'm, I'm going to do more of these because I'm staying close to home. I'm trying to quarantine while this COVID-19 stuff's going on. And, uh, and I got a lot more haul stuff to get through that is kind of backlogged right now. So, uh, oh, I did want to mention, I'm looking forward to watching this, uh, while I am in quarantine, uh, Superman Red Sun. Uh, this is the 4k Blu-ray. Uh, it's out now. I believe it came out this week or last week. Um, maybe this week. Is it this week? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Superman Red Sun. And uh, I was a huge fan of the comic series or the, the deluxe format book that they made. Uh, I really love this story. I'm a big Superman nut. So look for this if you're looking for a little something for home viewing to kill some time while you're in quarantine. Uh, and uh, again, you know, stay safe, guys. Um, I hope everybody is uh, taking care of themselves. Don't Don't be careless. Don't go to parties. Don't go to... You know, I know there's a lot of temptation to just get out of the house and go wild and and kind of, you know, like, ah, America, you know, but come on, you know, do the right thing. Uh, be careful what you do and um, just stay safe. That's the most important thing. Again, my apologies for being out of the loop for such a long time. Uh, it was a combination of a lot of things. Uh, moving, like I said, lots of boxes I still got to unpack. You see that shelf back there with comic boxes on it? Look at that. that. That shelf is filled with comic boxes. That is one of six shelves like it with comic boxes on it. That's how many comics I have. And that's not even all of my comic boxes. Jeez. Anyway, um, you never realize how much stuff you have until you have to move it. Uh, also, I had Dallas Comic Show last November. I had two Dallas Comic Shows, or three technically. I had one in April, I had one in August, and I had one in November. Uh, and those kept me really busy. I will never do three shows a year again, especially not this year. Uh, and then I had some personal issues that I had to deal with. My mom fell and broke her hip, so I had to help take care of her for a while. So I just haven't had a lot of time to be on YouTube. And um, I miss it, and I miss the community. And I promise you, uh, I'm, I'm back. So look for more videos from me. I'm, I'm going to be on here a lot more starting very, very soon. Thanks for joining me on this updated episode of Mark's Comic Call, y'all. Stay safe. Good night, everybody.